The team is in the four corners of America, and we've split up across four states to follow up with witnesses we met with the last time we were here. Right now, Cliff is in Arizona with witnesses Johnny and Carol, and it seems the activity has been ongoing because just two weeks ago, Carol and her daughter saw a Bigfoot on the road. What did she say she saw? She said it wasn't a horse or a cow or a bear. <laughs> Clearly, she could tell that it was something yes. large, like a horse large, or a cow yeah, or a bear. Yeah, something very large that came and went straight back in. Mm -hmm. You're taught not to mess with stuff like that, so <laughs> you just don't bother it. I think if the culture doesn't teach you not to mess with them, once you mess with a Bigfoot or two, it'll teach you not to mess with <laughs> right. it, right? And Navajos don't really go out in the dark in the pitch black. Mm. Now, why is that? There's not good things out there in the dark sometimes, so. Mm -hmm. Even though the Bigfoot activity has been ongoing since I left, there seems to be a concentration of reports right now at this time of year. Could you guys come out with me tonight and do a night investigation yes. to see if we can handle <laughs> this Let's guy for it. real this time? Let's do it. I'm always known for not having enough common sense, so I'm game. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> I'm on my way to meet with Navajo elder and tracker Leonard Dan. He had an encounter years ago while kayaking on the San Juan River in Utah. Leonard's sighting was in the 70s, but because he's a well-respected elder on the reservation and an expert animal tracker, people bring their Bigfoot reports to him. So hopefully, he has some new information to share. Hey, Leonard. Hey, hello. Hi there. Nice to see you again. Last time I was here, Leonard had a group of traditional dancers bless us before we went out. So now it's my turn to bring the gifts. You know what? You were so generous last time. I brought me a few gifts. This is sockeye salmon and cherries from the Pacific Northwest. Wow, thank you. With Leonard is his family friend, Claudia, another fellow Navajo. You know, I've been in touch with you. I've heard there's a lot going on down here. What, what's, yes. what's some of the recent reports you have? Well, there's been several sightings and reports. The latest one that's sort of unique is Claudia's sighting down the ravine here. Right here on this property? Right here, yep. Well, can you take me down there? Oh, yeah, of course. Let's go. All right. Sure. I'll see you again soon. Bye, Leonard. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Leonard shared with me that Claudia has had activity here on her property not even two weeks ago. Claudia's going to take me to location and tell me exactly what she experienced. Well, the animals love it here. Oh, yes, a lot. Not only is this a farm, this is a farm with some pretty great geography. It's above a ravine that outlets to the San Juan River. If the guys were here, they would say that this area is definitely squatchy. And what I can tell you for sure is that this ravine, this corridor, provides great access for animals moving from the San Juan River, a freshwater source, further inland. This is where any apex predator would want to be moving. So it's just like right in here where I saw it. Oh, this is not far from your house at all. Oh, then. no. Now, I haven't heard this report before, so can you run me through all the details? Yeah, of course. I was just taking a morning walk. And as I was going down there, my dogs seemed startled, like they were panicked. I heard noises from the ravine. I started to smell something horrible. That's when I could see the figure I realize this is a Bigfoot. I was scared. I've never seen anything like this. At any point, did you get a full look at its entire body? No. I was in shock. I didn't know what it was. I was scared of it. I didn't know if it would, like, attack me or anything. So you saw its upper body? Yes. Meaning its head, shoulders, torso, torso. and the arms? Yes. No way it was a person. I don't think this was a human. Could you tell if it was clothing? Could you tell if it was fur? Could you tell if it was hair? It definitely was hairy fur, mang like mangy, almost dreadlocky. So it wasn't smooth, it was kind of matted? Matted, exactly. So I'd love to get down there and do a size comparison. Is there a way to get down into that ravine? No, there's no access for any humans to get down there safely. So when you heard that noise, and you smelled the smell, and then you caught sight of that figure moving through, what do you think it was that you saw? I believe it was a Bigfoot. There's no way it was a person. No way it was a person. I was a skeptic before. I never thought I would ever see it. But now, I know it's around here. Claudia says there is no way a human can get down in that ravine. 
So unfortunately, I won't be able to do a size comparison. Now I'm not sure what she saw, but Claudia is positive it was a Bigfoot. And since it was only two weeks ago, I want to stick around and try to figure this mystery out. So I have to ask you, what are you doing later tonight? Nothing. Would you be so kind as to come out here again? Maybe we could do a little mini night investigation. There's recent activity. I think this would be a good spot. Oh, yes. Give me a tour? Yeah, of course. All right. I'm glad to be back in Colorado now that it's summertime. I'm going to go meet with George right now. He's the guy that recorded a video what he says is a baby Bigfoot sleeping in a tree. The place George took this video so far in the backcountry will never get there before dark. But I have a plan B, and B is for bitching an idea. Hey, what's up, George? Bobo. Sorry I'm late, man. Oh, good to see you. Better late than ever. The last time we were here, it was negative 26 that night. It was freezing. Now it's green and warm. Can't have it better than this, though. I mean, it's obviously too late to get a hike up to that spot. You said it's a couple miles, but I got the thermal and stuff. We could do a night investigation. Just go out tomorrow up to the spot where you got the video. Sounds good. Let's go grab the therm and suit up. All right. George goes squatching all the time, and today he's going to take me to the exact spot where we were last time. I'm totally stoked to be here when the weather's not just total crap. The location for the night investigation is actually at the foot of the mountain where George shot the video. He says this area has consistent activity, and not too long ago, he had definite wood knocks. I'm back at the Navajo Reservation to meet with Randy Yazzie, a witness I met during our last investigation of the Four Corners. He saw a family of young Sasquatches playing on a floodplain, and he says there's been tons of activity since we've been here last. He's offered to take me out tonight to a known hotspot on the Navajo Reservation. Randy, there he is. How's it going? Pretty good. So how do you say hello again in, in Navajo? Yate. Yate. Yate, man. Well, it's good I, to see you. Yeah. But this is the San Juan Riverbed is right there. They come up in this direction to go up over by your place. Yes. And so what time of night do you think they start coming out and moving they, through? They start coming out now. Do They'll they be, really? Yeah, they start picking through the bushes and okay. scratching their eyes. OK, well, let's get geared up and get ready. All right. The team and I have split up, each into our individual states, and we are all doing a night investigation with our respective witnesses. Renee's gonna take Claudia out in Utah. All right, here's a good spot to turn. Matt's gonna go out in New Mexico with his witness, Randy. We well, got a lot of frogs here, and I know they can eat those. That's yeah. just another protein supply. Bobo's gonna go out with George in Colorado. Like, what do the squatches do around here? Like, they whistle, howl, scream, knock. Like, I've gotten knocks here. I got a knocker in my backpack, so we can definitely do some knocks. That sounds good. All while I'm heading out with Johnny and Carol in Arizona. Looks like we found us some water in the rocks here from the rain. So this would be the water source for all the animals in the area. Yeah. We have a lot of information at our disposal and the best guides one can ask for. So this is our best chance to encounter a Sasquatch tonight. Check this out. What you looking at? I had laid a goat, dead goat right here. You laid a dead goat? How long ago was that? About Monday. In preparation for the night investigation tonight, Randy's done something unusual. He had a goat that died of old age just a couple of days ago, so he's brought that dead goat's body out to the edge of the wash to see if anything will come and take it. Well, a goat that's been dead for a few days might not sound too enticing to us, but a Sasquatch probably isn't so picky. So we're gonna go out there tonight to see if anything has taken that goat body. So right here, this is it? This is yes. where you laid the dead yes. goat? And it's gone, only, I think it's only the blood that's here. This dark spot right here. Oh, we got a lot of bones. Something's out there and it's hungry. <laughs> 